Hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com. Got a Lightroom tutorial for you today. In fact, I'm going to start a new Lightroom tutorial series called From Raw to Glorious JPEG. And I'll just sprinkle these in maybe a couple of months or something because what describes better the process of taking that raw photo right from your camera, processing it through to something that you're ready to add to your portfolio, share with your friends, send to a client, whatever it may be, this is the process of raw to glorious JPEG for a photo that I shot a number of years ago. We're going to walk through how to do everything that is to be done to it right here and right now. All right, so here we are in Adobe Lightroom. I have this image that I've just imported into Lightroom, and we're gonna head right over to the develop module here and uh, check this thing out and see what we want to do. Now, the, the sort of target at which we're shooting, or you can think of it as the request from the client, is that uh, this photo represent kind of like a, a, a prison yard type look, cold, emotionless, gritty, whatever that means, intense, has impact, stuff like that. So we can go ahead first, and I think I'm going to do this before I even mess around with this. Let's just zoom in and make sure that we've got a sharp image on our hands. I'm going to come up here and choose to go to one to one, uh, hold down. Well, I don't need to hold down my spacebar. What am I thinking? It's not Photoshop. I can drag around. It looks like we definitely got nailed focus there on her face. Uh, everything looks pretty good. Uh, if you are curious, actually, before we even begin retouching, I can jump over to Photoshop real quick. Here's basically how the photo was shot. So we've got her standing right here, right? This is her. She's the subject. We've got our chain link fence right here in front of her, just like so. Uh, what we did was we had a, a beauty dish back here that was kicking that side light onto her, right? That really intense light. It's actually really too much light. It's, it's way overexposed there on that side of her face. Um, and then I also had a small, like it was either a 28 or a 24 inch softbox kicking light here into the front of her face. And then of course, I'm standing right here uh, with the camera. So boom, there I am with the camera. And that, that's the shot. It's two lights, camera, chain link fence between us. Uh, pretty pretty simple. Uh, we can see here, in fact, the catch light. So the, the front light was maybe a little bit a little bit more centered. It was probably more like right here, uh, shooting light more directly into her face. And it was elevated up on a light stand. And we can tell that because the catch light is there up in the top of her eye. So that's great. And other than that, we can just tell the the, the shot is, you know, it's, it's exposed, it's sharp, it's all that good stuff. So uh, in order to start taking this in a direction where things are cool, I don't even know that I'm going to begin here messing with white balance or any of my exposure and tone. I think I want to go right to Tone Curve. Uh, if you're not sure how to use Tone Curve, well, just hang with me. Uh, we'll check it out together. Uh, first of all, we can see up here on our histogram that we have a lot going on up here in the lighter tones, uh, maybe too much. Let me just click to zoom back out. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to click on this histogram, and I'm going to drag back toward the right. I'm just going to see what happens if I just kind of cool off, or not even cool off, but tone down those highlights. Maybe I'll even pull back on the exposure a little bit, and I know what you're thinking. Hey, you're changing the exposure slider. You just said you weren't going to do that. I know, but I just got tempted looking at the, the histogram there. I'm going to come up here to Tone Curve. And if you're not familiar with how to use Tone Curve, you can use the little scrubby scrubby guy here. And uh, what I want to do is I think I want to add a little bit of contrast. So I'm going to select an area down here that's kind of relatively shadowy. And I'm just going to click. I'm going to un I just undid that because I accidentally dropped the point. I don't want you to I don't want you to get lost here. I'm going to click down here and I'm just going to like drag down a little bit, increase the contrast in the shadows. And then I'm going to come out here. I don't know. I don't want I don't want to have this dropped right on the middle of her forehead. I think I'm going to bring my slider back somewhere around here. And I can see a live preview of where it's going to drop the point. And this big peak, I know that's the majority of my highlights. So I want a point kind of right before I get to those highlights. And something like right around there does that. So I'm going to click there and I'm going to drag upward a little bit. Let's take a break from our retouching. Hey, if you like what you see and you want to support the channel, this channel is funded entirely by viewers just like you. I have a Photoshop course all about how to retouch images. There's a link that'll appear somewhere right up there in the top corner of the video, but there's also a link in the bio of this video. Pick up a copy of that today. Support what we're doing here on the channel. I'd be super grateful for you for that. Uh, we're looking to expand and do bigger and better and really awesome things coming here in the future. Let's get back to this tutorial. Just increase the contrast a little. I can hit the little before after switch. There's before, there's after. So we're just punching a little contrast in there. I want to lift the black straight upward. So I'm just going to click on the black point. I'm going to boost that up a little bit just to just to really kick the shadows a little bit. And I think overall I'm pretty happy with uh, with the overall exposure. Let's work on some coloring here. Uh, let's go to the blue channel first because we want, remember we want this to be cold, emotionless, gritty. So we want to begin sucking some of the warmth out of her skin. So I'm going to just hover over her forehead here and I'm going to push upward to start introducing blue. Now it really adds a lot of magenta. In order to combat the magenta in this shot, we want to go over to our green channel and add green as well. Green is the opposite of magenta. So if I add a little bit of green, it's going to start just neutralizing some of that magenta. That's pretty cool. 
cool. And we could even try to remove some red as well. So we can go to the red channel. I can say, look, there is still too much red, maybe somewhere over here. And I can start pulling some cyan into this shot as well. Or we are giving it a heavy color cast. That's fine. We can just look at a quick before and after. We can see we've really iced things up a bit. Now, at this point, I could go over to HSL if there are particular colors that are bothering me, kind of like this pink in her in her scarf there. I think that's a little distracting. So I would go over here to HSL. Uh, I would probably just go to the saturation here, and I can grab the saturation scrubby tool, but I think we can just target this with magenta, and I can begin backing that out. The one thing you want to watch is like uh, sometimes a model's lipstick or around their eyes will have some magenta, and you can really do a lot of damage. I'll take purples out as well, and yeah, in this case, see, I need to take some red out. So I want to be careful because there's a lot of red in her skin as well. So I'm going to back that off to about right there. That works. We've really just taken a lot of the richness, the, the, kind of the happiness out of that color. I like that. Now I'm going to go back to basic. So at this point, I can just drag my histogram around or I can use my exposure slider. I am, I think, going to dump the exposure a little bit, kind of something like that. And I'm going to just lift the black straight up. And I think I'm going to, I already dropped the highlights a lot, so I think I'm going to drop the exposure even a little bit more. Let me see what happens if I remove contrast. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I definitely want to remove contrast, not add contrast. There still seems to be a little bit too much like green or warmth in the skin. I don't really want to get rid of green because if I do that, I'm going to start introducing magenta back to the scene. And we just took all that time to get rid of the magenta, so I don't really want to do that. I think what I'll do is I'll push some blue into it using my temperature slider and then add a little bit of green. Eh, no, I don't really want to add too much green on top of that. Maybe I will drop just a little bit of magenta. Not much, though. Really don't want to do much there. Uh, and then what we need to do, we want to increase the clarity a little bit. You don't want to go too high on the clarity. Clarity is going to give it some nice punch. And I think I want to reduce saturation but boost vibrance. So I'm going to go like negative 40 on saturation. That might be a little bit too extreme. Maybe I'll go like negative 20. It can be fun to play with these sliders, push and pull them either way. Maybe I'll go the other way. Maybe I'll go like negative 20 or 30 on the vibrance and push saturation up about plus 20. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. I think I like that. Hey, one more quick interruption for you. If you're enjoying what you're seeing here, you want to see more Lightroom Photoshop, photography-related, retouching-related tutorials, well, make sure you subscribe to the channel. That way you can check out all of the videos from the past and, of course, never miss a video heading into the future. Let's get back to it. And at this point, I'm going to jump down to my split toning here, and I'm just going to add a little bit more blue to the shadows. So just going to add that blue to the shadows, something kind of like that. I want to stay away from adding yellow to the highlights here because it's just really going to make it, it's going to give it kind of like that cheesy, uh, you know, Photoshop or Lightroom kind of like cheap preset look. I really don't like that. So we're just going to add a little blue to the shadows, kind of like that. And we still have that faded look in the shadows. So I'm going to come down here to effects. I'm going to punch the dehaze a little bit here. You can see how that's really going to change the overall complexion of this shot. Really add a lot of uh, the, kind of like this really interesting. It's a, it's a mixture of contrast and clarity without giving you a lot of the bad haloing that clarity tends to give. We can also go to lens correction, by the way. Just throw a little, you know, enable profile correction on there. I shot it with a 70, 70 to 200 f2.8. Uh, Canon lens there. I can change the distortion if I need. Yeah, I'll change it a little bit. I don't need to mess around with it too much. You could add a vignette. I just, I'm really kind of out on vignettes uh, at this at this particular time, so I'm not a huge fan of them. As you look over this, I haven't planned any of this out, so this is all just, you know, me bouncing back and forth. I think I want to come back to blues here, and I want to try dragging the blues in the very shadows up a little bit, see what that does, and then pull some yellow back into some of those mid-tones. I think I kind of like, I kind of like what that's doing. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to go over to greens. I'm also going to push greens up in the shadows, but I'm going to quickly counteract that by pulling the greens uh, or pulling this this curve back into normalcy uh, very quickly thereafter, the shadows. And I'm just going to add another point to the middle of the green just to kind of make sure it's nice and straight and we're not adding too much green to those mid-tones, but we also don't want to be dumping a ton of purple in there as well. Red, I don't know that I really want to mess with red. I think I kind of like where red is uh, maybe. Eh, I said I'm not going to mess with it. I don't think I'm really going to. I'm not going to mess with red. I think it's good where it is. I'll go over to the composite RGB channel here. Yeah, you know, not bad. I also have to say that before I would have done any of this, I probably would have sent it over to Photoshop and cleaned up a couple of these stray hairs and things like that. I'm not really going to mess with them too much in Lightroom. Maybe I can get rid of some of the freckly stuff with the spot removal tool. You know, just a quick click here, a quick click there kind of thing. But usually that's, that's on a basis of whatever the model requests uh, or if there's something really glaring that I'm just like, I really want to take that out before it goes into my portfolio. Uh, but usually it's up to it's up to the subject, what they want out or what they want in. 
All right, so we'll just take away a couple spots. Just, you know, that's just how we use the, the blemish removal tool. I think one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come up here and just hit fit so I can see the whole image again. I want to change the lighting a little bit. There's too much light here in the foreground. So I want to add a shadow to the foreground and maybe even a little bit of light to the top of the frame. We'll use the graduated filter tool here to do that. Uh, I'm going to set the exposure whatever a little over one. I'll drag this down from the top. You can see that's way, way, way too bright. So we're going to set this to like 0 0.33. We'll bump it like a third of a stop. And now I'm going to drag this up from the bottom, just holding down shift which is giving me a nice straight graduated filter here. And I'm going to do the opposite here, although maybe I'll take it two thirds of a stop. I'll go negative 0.66 here for the bottom. Ooh, I might go even less. Let's go negative uh, 1.33. Mm, that's too much. Let's go negative one straight up and we'll pump a little contrast into the foreground to combat some of that haziness, maybe even a little bit of dehaze. That's pretty cool. And I think I'll desaturate just that foreground area a little bit more. There we go, something like that is pretty cool. And as I look at it, eh, probably a little bit too heavy. So I'll select that bottom gradient and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go back to my initial gut, negative 0 0.66, I'm gonna leave it there. I think that's that's pretty cool. And before we add our, just to some sharpening here, we could just go take a look at camera calibration. This is always fun to go check this out. And the funny thing about like retouching workflow here in Lightroom is sometimes I come here first, sometimes I don't come here at all and sometimes I come here last. Uh, we can do something like camera neutral. I, I find that that brings out a lot of dynamic range uh, of your raw file. If you go camera neutral, it just tends to like cool down the highlights and just boost the shadows a little bit. And you can choose to infuse some magenta or green into your shadows. I think in this image, the green is really gonna work for us. And then we can choose to shift you know, the, the primary hues, the reds, the greens, and the blues in this image. And you can see here, if I shift it all the way over toward the orange, we get this crazy effect on our skin, not really all that pleasing. If we go the other way, we really make our skin, you know, kind of the color of a, a badly ripened grape. Uh, so I don't like that either. I'll bump the hue a little bit toward the pinks, and then we can boost the saturation or we can remove saturation. And this could tend to give our image more of like a vampire look, but you know, maybe that is a little bit of that cold, emotionless look that we want. So I'll reduce the saturation a little bit. We can take a look at the greens here. You can see, eh, I don't know. I'm not really going to mess with the greens too much, I don't think. Let's see what happens if we push saturation through the roof versus remove saturation. Nah, I'm just going to double click both of those uh, slider handles and just set them back to normal. And then we'll take a look at blue here. So we got like a sea green and like kind of a weird pinky color in the middle. I don't want to mess with that either. Uh, but definitely adding that green tint to the shadows, I think that was nice. And if we wanted to do one last thing, we could add like a radial filter here and just click to add it here on her face. I'll drag it out, kind of, sort of, something like that. And you can see what's happening is her face is remaining dark everywhere around the face is, you know, 1.26 brighter. So I'm going to set that to zero because all I really want to do is boost the highlights a little bit, but I don't want to do it everywhere else. I just want to do it on her face. So I'm going to scroll down and just choose to invert the mask. It's just adding a little bit of like brightness to her face. Maybe we could even kick a little bit more clarity into there. We really want her face to be engaging. In fact, her eyes might be a little bit too dark. So maybe we could add a little bit of light into those shadows lift the blacks just a little bit. You wanna make sure that the face doesn't look out of place. We just want it to like almost subliminally, subconsciously, we want people to be drawn into the eyes. That's great, all right, cool. So we can just uh, get rid of the, or just hide the radial, uh, the, the radial, the radial filter options there. And last but not least, we'll go down here to detail. So what I can do is I can use my little loop tool here. I'll just zoom in over her eye, take a look at the eye, but really what you should be doing, just work at one to one, 100% uh, zoom, so you can really see what's happening. I like to hold down my alter option key when I'm working with these sharpening sliders. Uh, for the sharpening slider, it makes it go black and white, so you can really just focus on the edge sharpening and not be distracted by any color in your image. Uh, hold down alter option with radius, and you can see it's going to give us like this high pass overview. It really helps me see like what's going on over there in the hair. That's great. Then for detail, you just get like a, a good map of just the detail that's being affected. I'm not really going to mess too much with the detail. Masking is a really important one, and here I'm going to set this back to fit up here so I can see my whole image. I'm going to hold down alter option, and and just adjust my masking until kind of only the details in the image, her hair, the edges on her face, things like that are being sharpened. The areas of black and, and dark gray are not really getting that much sharpening at all. The more the, an area is white, the more uh, sharpening is going to be applied to those areas. What that means is back here, where it's just a solid block of color, I don't want to just sharpen noise because it's going to make my image appear more grainy than it is and just not really all that great. I'm going to come back up here to basic. I think I want to put a little bit more green overall into the photo and maybe add a little bit more blue on the top now that I'm just looking at it the way it is. I'm just using my down arrow key here. 
Maybe I'll just level this off. Let's look at it at 4,000 even and see what that looks like. That's a little bit too blue. I'm going to go 4,200, I think. 4,200, that's pretty good. Negative 15 on the tint. I guess that works. That looks pretty good uh, for where I sit. Let's take a look at before and after. So I'm just going to hit this little option right down here. This Y and Y. And you're going to see it's going to give me, there was the raw image we began with. And here is the photo that we have now. So we took it from being what looked like, you know, kind of overexposed. Now when we look at what we've got, it really does look overexposed. We take that photo and we make it darker and bluer and less less warm, less inviting, more harsh. Her, her stare even looks more intense in this photo than it did here because we darkened it up we we made it look a little grittier we sharpened it up uh, we did a lot to the photo uh, and we had a bunch of fun doing it I'm gonna go back to my normal loop view here so we can check out the full image uh, in all its glory so yeah, that'll pretty much be it for this one. The very first Lightroom from raw to glorious JPEG or whatever. We'll, we'll come, out, come up with a good working title or kind of trim and neaten that title up a little bit as we crank out more and more of these uh, Lightroom tutorials. But how'd you like it? Did you enjoy it? Um, yeah, it was just kind of like a casual sit down and retouch the photo or you know change the color and sharpness and everything else that, that would be done here in Lightroom. So for the very first from raw to glorious JPEG video tutorial and all of the white balance and color calibration sharpening and all the other nonsense that went along with it, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do. And this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.